It's time to talk about some new Microsoft hardware, and of course that means the Surface Pro. I've got right here, really the flagship, the new Surface Pro 9, and you may look at it and say, this doesn't seem all that different from the Surface Pro 8. Although visually, this one is a little different because it comes in one of the two new colors. This is sapphire, which is bluish, and even on top of that, this is a limited edition that has the keyboard cover with a floral design, and you can actually see the floral design is laser etched into the back. Uh, so that's a limited edition on top of the new colors that not everyone is going to be able to get. The other new color is forest, kind of greenish, uh, and other than that, just regular kind of computery surface colors. But for the Surface Pro 9, on the inside, we're moving up to 12th generation Intel chips in some of the models, not all of them, because there's actually now two versions of the Surface Pro 9. One of them runs Intel, a very traditional sort of computer device. The other one runs the SQ3, which is a new chip that follows along with the SQ2 and SQ1. And these were ARM chips that Microsoft developed with Qualcomm to originally go in a different device called the Surface Pro X. And that device was a uh, mobile broadband device. Uh, it ran on, uh, it was a 4G device. Uh, the new version is a 5G device. That 5G model is the one that runs the ARM chip instead of Intel. The regular Surface Pro 9 runs the Intel. Now, the interesting thing that happens when you do that, you kind of fork the system. Now there's two distinct forks within the Surface Pro 9, and on top of one of them having 5G and an ARM chip, and one of them uh, not having 5G, just being Wi-Fi and running Intel, there are actually a bunch of interesting extra features you can get in that 5G version running on the ARM chip because of that Qualcomm chip inside. It has all these studio effects that come into play when you're using the webcam to, let's say, do video meetings. And I got to see some demos of a few of them. Uh, that includes, uh, you know, better background blurring. That includes, uh, you know, following you around uh, in the camera while you move. That includes drowning out background noise. I saw an interesting demo where somebody had a hairdryer going. And with voice focus turned on, can't hear it. And again, those features, at least for now, are only in the 5G ARM version. That's the Surface Pro 9 with 5G, not in the regular Intel Surface Pro 9. A couple of other upgrades on the inside. You get uh, slightly faster RAM than the previous generation. Uh, we've got Thunderbolt ports now. Here's something I thought was really interesting. You won't be able to see it. I'm just going to tell you about it. But right up here is the webcam on this guy. And if you set this up as you normally would to do a video meeting, let's say it's sitting here. I've got the little kickstand out. Uh, the camera angle, it's kind of up a little bit. And when I see people on their laptops with their webcams, the camera angle is always a little up the nose like that, even if, even if it's not too low down. So what they did here was they actually tilted the camera module inside this, I think about four degrees down this way. So it's just pointing the tiniest bit down. So when I have it set up like this, it's actually pointed right at me. And that is going to look a lot better. Now, apart from that stuff, there's not a heck of a lot new about the Surface Pro 9, but it keeps all the stuff that we've liked about this line for years. This is actually the 10th anniversary of the Surface line. So you still have uh, this clip-on keyboard that is frankly still the best in class for a Windows tablet clip-on keyboard. It just kind of magnetically attaches and detaches like that. You can fold it up and get a nice protective cover. And as a uh, clip-on keyboard, it's frankly pretty good. Touchpad is pretty good, keyboard is pretty good, and you can hide your stylus right in there. This is the Microsoft Slim Pen 2, and it actually charges the stylus while you're doing that. Here's the catch. It's always the catch with these. I talk about this every year when they do a refresh. You gotta buy the keyboard cover separately. It's usually 130 bucks. Some fancier versions like this will probably cost more. You gotta buy the stylus separately. I think that's another $130. And the uh, Surface Pro 9 itself, I don't think we have exact pricing for it yet, but previous models have started about 800 bucks and gone up from there, depending on what uh, CPU you have, how much storage, how much RAM. Uh, so when you put it all together, it is kind of a big investment. Uh, but that said, this is definitely the best tablet keyboard that I've used on a Windows device, and the stylus is pretty good too. One thing you don't have to pay extra is frankly one of the best engineering parts of this product, and it's been like this since uh, probably the, I don't know, third or fourth generation of it, they really nailed it. That's this kickstand down here. Uh, it's super stiff. You can angle it pretty much almost, almost 180 degrees, not quite, but it really does stay wherever you put it. Uh, and it's one of those simple things that if you don't get it right, the system is just not gonna feel right. And I have to say the Surface Pro over the last many years has really gotten that kickstand right, so much so that I've seen other brands start to emulate it and try to copy it as much as they can.
So one thing I like about the Surface Pro 9 and the stylus combo is that the stylus has a little uh, button on the back. You just click on it, it pops open a note so you can do your note taking or you can do your sketching. I'm not sure what's inspiring me today. I'm just gonna do a little, there we go. I call this person at a Microsoft press event. So you may ask yourself, well, why would I want a complicated device like this instead of just getting a laptop or just getting a tablet? You know, there are a lot of use cases where you want something that's frankly pretty small and light and portable, and that's what this guy is. If you want to sit in bed or on the couch and watch TV or a video or do something like that, you can just pop the top off and you have a standalone tablet that's much more productivity focused than let's say something like an iPad is. Uh, but if you want to have that typing experience, you need to send some emails, do some work, write some reports, but then you clip on the uh, keyboard cover, which is why you absolutely need the keyboard cover even though it's sold separately, and you have something that is probably the closest to a full clamshell laptop-like experience I've seen in one of these tablet-based uh, two-in-ones. You can do the same thing with an iPad Pro and get the clip-on keyboard for that, but it's not quite the same because that operating system isn't really built around that sort of productivity. This is just running regular old Windows 11 and all the productivity apps you use with that. Uh, so you get that, you know, entertainment tablet vibe and you get the full laptop vibe. I'm actually very interested in using something like this for uh, gaming, not local gaming because it doesn't have a GPU, but we're seeing so much cloud gaming now, especially from Microsoft with Xbox cloud gaming. I could totally see taking this device, popping open the uh, kickstand, setting it up here, getting a game controller and doing Xbox cloud gaming through it and you get a nice little screen for that. So the new Surface Pro 9, that's the Surface Pro 9, the Intel version, and the Surface Pro 9 with 5G, uh, that's that ARM version that has 5G built in. They're both gonna be available starting October 25th. The Surface Pro 9 is actually not the only piece of new hardware today. We've got two other updates. One is the Surface Laptop. That's now up to Surface Laptop 5. And a little bit surprising, the Surface Studio. That is an all-in-one desktop. This is now the Surface Studio 2 Plus because it's frankly not different enough for the last version to be called the Surface Studio 3. I think the Surface Studio 2 came out in 2018, the original Surface Studio in like 2016. So even all these years later, it's kind of a cult product that has its fans and Microsoft is still making it and still updating it because there's a you know install base, uh, a lot of it largely commercial that really uses this device because frankly, it is pretty cool for an all-in-one. It looks like a big drafting table right here, but look at that, I can lift it up easily. That now it looks more like an all one computer. I can push it down like this and I can use, you know, a stylus with it. I can use the uh, old Microsoft dial if my software supports it to, uh, you know, go through brushes and stuff. But this is the same exact chassis as the 2018 version. The only real difference is here, they have updated the CPU, but not to 12th gen, uh, to an 11th gen uh, new Intel CPU. Uh, the graphics card is now an NVIDIA RTX 3060, which is pretty good. Uh, they've added Thunderbolt to some of the ports, but other than that, this is the exact exact same product as it was uh, 18, 19, like four years ago. Uh, the same exact chassis, although frankly, it's still pretty nice. I really like the hinge on this and the flexibility. Screen bezel feels kind of big these days, frankly, in 2022. Uh, but hopefully someday we'll see a fully updated version, uh, hopefully called the Surface Studio 3. And then of course, there's the Surface Laptop 5, which follows the Surface Laptop 4, et cetera, et cetera. You can get a 13 inch or a 15 inch version. New this time, really very, very little. Uh, there's some new colors, including this green that actually uh, looks pretty nice. Again, we've moved up to 12th gen Intel processors, uh, upgraded to Thunderbolt on some of the ports, and it's got faster RAM. But other than that, it's really exactly the same as the Surface Laptop 4, which was a perfectly fine device. I actually like the Surface Laptop line a lot because um, it's a pretty slick looking Windows laptop, but if you want something that has kind of that MacBook Air vibe, but running at Windows, and they're reasonably priced. They're not that expensive anyway, but they're often on sale. I find around holiday time, especially through the Microsoft store, there are a lot of good discounts on these. So this is one of my secret uh, ways to get a really good laptop and spend less, is to wait for a nice sale on the Surface Laptop by Microsoft. And the latest version is gonna be the Surface Laptop 5.